And you say that to yourself too, you know, when you wake up at night and you're guilty I'm not living up to my potential And you don't feel good about that And you think, well, there's potential around you that you're not exploiting You know, and you feel bad about that too And you should And so it's a good source of guilt and shame Not enough to crush you maybe, but enough to wake you up And it's certainly not something you hope for for the people that you love Ah, uh, it's okay, you're wasting your potential uh, It doesn't matter It's like no one says that And so what, we're contending with potential and we know that because we wake up in the morning and poof, we're awake, like the sun has risen again. We're awake and we confront the world. And what do we confront? We confront the possibilities, the potential and the horror of the day. Here's the things we could do. Here's the things that could go bad. Here's how we could make things go better. And you know what that is. It's usually, uh, there's three or four things that I need to do today that I'd rather avoid. But I better do them because if I don't do them, the world will be a worse place by six o'clock tonight, right? And that's a funny thing because the world isn't like that yet. It isn't made like that yet. It won't be made like that until you make it. And you might think, well, here's some things I could do that would be good that would actually make the world a better place by six o'clock tonight. Take some effort, you know, and, and the willingness and some aim, but you could do that. You could make it slightly better than it was and certainly slightly less worse than it could be. And, and you know that, it weighs on you, I would say, as soon as you wake up. It might be a moral burden, or it might be excitement, or it might be some combination of both. But that's certainly how you view yourself. A conscious agent confronting what has not yet been brought into being. Confronting potential and determining the course that the world's going to take. Maybe just in your small area, but who knows how big your area is and how much what you do echoes around you, you know? We have an idea in our culture that each of us is the center of the world. That's why you're, the, you're, the, you're part of the sovereign state. That's why you vote. That's why the future of the state itself is dependent on your decision. Because we've decided over like a 10,000 year period that you're king. You, for whatever, for whatever reasons, it's on you your conscious ability to be awake and to be articulate and to, and to be clued in and to keep nature at bay and culture straight and your own malevolence under check and to combat the unknown and to transform it into something that's good. That's what you are. And you see this reflected in the oldest stories. That's the dragon myth, you know? You go out into the terrible unknown beyond what we understand, into the unknown itself, and you confront the terrible thing that rests there the terrible predatory, eternal predatory monster. And you can do that, because that's what you're like. You're not cowering at home. You're not frozen into submission. You're out there active, and you can take it on. And as a consequence, you can attain something of substantive value, right? And, th and that's you, that's the transformation of you, because now you're braver because you've done it, but it's also something now that you've, you've garnered from the potential. And you can bring that back, and you can distribute that into the community. That's the story of humanity. It's the oldest story we have, and it's correct.